I've been waiting for the Jehovah's Witnesses to turn off at my door for a while, but I think I must give them too hard a time because they've stopped turning up. So it's been a good while since I've had a good doomsday. Um, I think the millennium was the last one. Um, you know, I mean, it's funny, we, we, we get lots of doomsdays um, that we you know, always seem to live through somehow. Lots of apocalyptic scenarios that never quite happen. Um, so it was good that you know the CERN thing kicked off a, a good doomsday because it's you know that, I, I think it's good for the soul it reinvigorates you to, to have imminent death. Not that it was ever really that likely. Let's be honest, they weren't actually doing the big collision thing that gets people so scared. Um, that happens on October the twenty-first. So hey, <laughs> this one we get two doomsdays for the price of one. The great thing about CERN is, not only given us two doomsday dates, but it's given us two doomsday scenarios as well. Firstly, we might get lots of black holes um, swallowing up the Earth and killing us all instantly. Well, except black holes suck in time as well, so um, it's actually death over millennium. That's, that's kind of horrible. If that happens, I'd, I'd recommend going in head first, otherwise you could have the longest oh shit moment in history. Um, yeah, uh, but then you know time is relative, so you know maybe it'll be over by lunchtime for you. Although everyone else will see you dying for millennia before they get sucked in straight after you. Yeah, sounds kind of nasty actually. But anyway, that's not going to happen because it'll be making little tiny microscopic black holes, little baby ones, which will be very cute and die quite quickly because I don't know. <laughs> black holes have a high rate of being stillborn or something. Um, the other one that, that's actually kind of a little more scary in a way is they're going to be creating matter, you see. And if that matter's more stable than we've got in the universe at the moment, yes, yeah, we'll get onto the sciencey bits in a moment if you like, but then what could happen is then um, everything that comes into contact with that matter gets turned into that matter. Yeah, I know it sounds a bit far fetched, sort of like that, an atomic version of a sexually transmitted disease, but. Um, Basically, if that happens, then Geneva will get turned into this sort of big thing called a strangler. Um, uh, and I think that's no big loss, really. I mean, Geneva's not got a lot to do. It's a lake and some treaty that everybody ignores these days. So, um, really, what's the deal? You know, we just won't go to Geneva and <laughs> big loss. You know? So, no, not really the end of the world. Just unless you live in Geneva, in which case it is. What a lot of people are asking is, what are they actually doing with this Large Hadron Collider? Um, well, it, it's basically a big tube, and they fire protons around it, and they hit each other and go bang. This has all got to do with, with something called string theory. And the reason that's important is because, like, when you look at planets, they all orbit each other and there's something called gravity that, that sort of keeps them orbiting and, and that's great, the Newtonian model, you know, it works for planets it doesn't work at the subatomic level um, when you've got, you know, quarks and, and other things that I wasn't taught about at school because the Japanese hadn't miniaturized the atom then so, um, quantum mechanics doesn't work on gravity that, that, you know, things rotate around themselves just because they do so, and, you know, there's this chaos theory and and butterfly effect and all of that kind of stuff and you know if a tree falls over in the woods does it make a sound well, quantum mechanics sort of says well <laughs> there's no tree unless it's observed which is weird I know far-fetched but mm, that's what quantum theory is all about and the problem is quantum physics and quantum mechanics and all those other sciences with Q in the name doesn't work with the Newtonian model of, of of gravity and, and the Einstein model of relativity, they, they, they just sort of don't go together. Um, but string theory provides simple mathematical formula that says all of this stuff can work um, with these maths. And what it basically is, is it, it's a simple formula that makes everything one dimensional um, in terms of being calculated and puts everything else into loads of other dimensions. And what they reckon is this, that there's actually 16 dimensions in you know, width, height, depth, um, time, that's our first thought. Those are the ones we see. And then there's all the ones we can't see. They, they reckon they know what six is, nuclear energy and, 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 and light and, and other stuff. Um, and, and they're pretty sure they know what the 11th is, and, and they, they reckon there's probably five more. Um, although, if string 
theory might also have 16 dimensions, 10, 11, or 32, or whatever. Um, they're not entirely sure, because string theory can't be proved. Because we can't see all these other dimensions to, to prove they exist. Um, but the maths are quite simple, and, and they sort of work um, on, on the grounds that you don't know what's in the other dimension, so you juggle the numbers around until it works. So, you know, it apparently is the answer to everything. And because of that, um, they, they reckon string theory is right, and, and so everything is made off of strings, or spaghetti. Um, so what I want to know is how the hell did Pastafarians get so much funding? But uh, other than that, what, what, what they, they think is that this, this thing called the, the Higgs boson thing, which is a bit like the Dolmi assaults for the spaghetti, um, that gives everything matter and something. And the basic theory is that they're going to fire these bits of spaghetti at each other, change the way that they wobble and bend into all these different dimensions, and as a result, go through the dimensions which will give it matter and, and, and or light or, or whatever, and they're going to see what happens, and they think that's how the Big Bang happened. So it's all because of Italy, really, where spaghetti comes from. Blame them. Or Stephen Hawking, because, you know, he's clever. So. The reason this is all important is because apparently there isn't enough matter in the universe to sustain it or something. Um, they reckon that 23% of the matter that should be in the universe doesn't exist. Well, this is because either the maths are wrong, or we know the Newtonian model isn't quite right, we know quantum physics isn't quite right, and string theory is a guess. Um, so <laughs> but anyway, so they reckon this matter does exist, um, and, and, and they hope to maybe find it in one of these other dimensions that we can't see, or maybe Stephen Hawkins is right and it's 300 foot underground in a Yorkshire mine shaft where he's looking for something called dark matter. Um, but, you know, wherever it is, um, they, they, the scientists want to find it, and apparently that's important because it explains where 23% of the universe is. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just got lost. You know, it's a big place. Okay. Can't see it all. Anyway. So basically, string theory is a science of faith and that encompasses all the other sciences and can't be proved. So um, it's a bit like Buddhism, really. Um, except it's scientific, you know, except usually science you have to be able to prove for it to be right. Well, that, that's the point of science, it, it's all methodology and stuff. And, um, hello, little Mothy. Hello. I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, I'm cute. <laughs> yeah, so, um, right. <laughs> Where the hell was I? Oh, I don't know. So, anyway, so, yeah. Um, basically, it's not exactly a science, it's sort of a, a guess, um, but they reckon they might find the Higgs boson anyway, and apparently that's a really, really important breakthrough um, for some of his career. It will enable him to go and chat shows for a few weeks, um, and, and then nobody will care about them anymore, because nobody really understands it or gives a damn. So basically, they're going to fire these protons around this tube, um, make the strings bang into each other so they vibrate differently and, and change their state from one dimension to another. So if they fired light down it, they might get matter. Uh, if they want antimatter, they'll probably have to fire the darkness down it, which is okay because the band split up and, and let's face it, the second album wasn't as good as the first. You know. But anyway, so that that's basically my, um, my, my little YouTube vid of the whole Large Hadron Collider thing. And I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.